Well, happy weekend, everybody. Parents, are you ready? Are you ready for what's coming? For most of the listening area, school's out and summer's kicking off for kids everywhere. It's going to be chaos. You're listening to the Repcolite Home Improvement Show, sponsored by Benjamin Moore. And on today's episode, we're going to be talking about paint project regret. And I know that sounds like a real winner, a deep dive into regret early on a weekend morning, but it's going to be good because I'm going to tell you how you can avoid paint regret, as well as a number of other common mistakes on your next project. I'll also be talking with Mark DeVisser from Great Lakes Plumbing, and I'm going to be asking him some of your plumbing questions. But first, let's get back to summer. I started with summer. Let's get back to it. If your kids are at home, do you have projects lined up for them? You know, stuff they're supposed to accomplish. Now, I remember the job lists growing up. You know, that was the downside to summer, the big lists that mom would hand out. And one of my least favorite projects that I was given from time to time uh, was cleaning the garage. I'm still not a fan of cleaning the garage, but back then it was because I didn't want to do it. Now it's because I don't want to do it and I don't know what to do with the stuff anyway. You know, when when you're a kid, at least your parents have the responsibility of figuring out where the things need to go. You just got to kind of sweep stuff. Now that I'm a grown up, I've got to figure out what to do with the 15 lawnmowers I own. Well, rather than sit here in this perpetual state of hand-wringing, I decided it's time to figure out how to fix things. See, the problem with my garage isn't complicated. It's really simple. I have too much stuff, and I don't know what to do with it. You know, it's not hard to see what's wrong here. It's getting it corrected that's a little tougher. Now, I'm pretty sure that my situation isn't that different from many of you out there. So let's talk about some things that might help all of us make some headway on, you know, really what feels like a perennial summer project. Now, first off, some of my excess stuff is big ticket things, you know, a couple broken lawnmowers, some exercise equipment, what feels like a massive herd of bicycles. You know, every kid, and I've got five, every kid has two, you know, and then I've got to have several. So we've got, you know, enough bikes for an army. If you're dealing with that, I want to encourage you. I've got the answer to this part. You know, a few months ago, I got so sick of this. Technically, to be honest, full disclosure, the law was called in because I had, we have a lot of cars with a lot of kids, and I couldn't get a car in the garage, so it sat on the road. So the law was called, and the long arm of the law reached out, grabbed me by the scruff of the neck, and encouraged me in no small way to figure out a way to solve this problem. And I did, really easily. I called 1-800-GOT-JUNK, and I know there are other companies out there who'll do the same. You could arrange for a dumpster to be dropped off in your driveway. Whatever you do, do it. I called 1-800-GOT-JUNK, and these guys came out with a big truck, loaded up all those excess bikes, the lawn equipment, the exercise stuff, grills, you name it. They dispose of it responsibly, and suddenly I saw light at the end of the tunnel. You know, that garage felt crazy lighter. How light? Well, here, I'll tell you. I spent evenings in it after we did this. Evenings I spent there with a cup of coffee, sitting on a little folding chair, just looking at the garage. That's how you know it's a project well done. If you go out and look at it with coffee at all hours of the day... You did well. So I'm doing that. And I'm halfway to a manageable garage. But the second category of excess junk I've got is a collection of hazardous materials left over, you know, from the previous owner, along with stuff that I've amassed, pesticides, garden chemicals, oil from oil changes, paint thinner, and more. You know, I can't throw it away and the junk haulers won't take it. So what do you do with it? Well, I know there are home hazardous waste facilities in Ottawa County, Kent County, the east side of the state. They're all over the place, but I really wasn't sure how they worked. You know, would they take what I had? Did I need an appointment? How expensive was it? Stuff like that. So I reached out to multiple people and the folks from the Ottawa County Department of Public Health got back to me. Now, I don't know if all of this info will apply to your area, in your area, if you're outside of Ottawa County, but from the websites that I've checked out, it really looks pretty similar. Now, anyway, here are some of the things to know if you've got a ton of stuff like I described and you want to get your garage cleaned out. Now, first off, private residents don't need an appointment at the Ottawa County Department of Public Health sustainability sites. You don't need an appointment. However, if you're a business in need of disposal, you really should call ahead and make that appointment. Again, I believe the other hazardous waste drop-off sites are similar throughout Michigan, but double check. If you're in Ottawa County, just find the closest one, check their hours out, and get there. You don't need an appointment. 
Second, you're going to love this. There's absolutely no charge to dispose of your household hazardous wastes in this manner. Plus, besides taking all kinds of hazardous materials like garden chemicals and pesticides and stuff, they'll also generally accept residential consumer electronics. So I'm thinking flat screen TVs, computer towers, monitors, laptops, stuff like that. They'll also take scrap metal free of charge. Also, one other thing to note here, Ottawa County specifically informed me that they'll accept cathode ray tube televisions, you know, projection TVs and stuff like that. Uh, if they've got a screen size smaller than 30 inches, those are $10. So there is a charge for those. If their screen size is greater than 30 inches, it's going to be 20 bucks. Still very reasonable to get that stuff out of your garage. Third, generally speaking, staff's on hand to help you during the posted hours. They're going to ask for help with the big stuff, but they're there to help you. Again, I'm speaking in generalities here. I only spoke to Ottawa County on this, but it seems like the other ones are going to be very similar. So check out the sustainability sites in your area, get the details, and get that stuff out of your garage. Yeah, it's a process. Yeah, it's not always free, but the freedom you gain from doing this and cleaning out that garage... It's going to be great. And maybe, maybe you'll end up spending some nights during your summer just sitting out there with a cup of coffee, looking at everything you've created. All right, let's take a break. And when we come back, I'll be getting your plumbing questions answered by Mark DeVisser from Great Lakes Plumbing. And the people whose questions get asked, you're going to be getting a $25 gift certificate to RepcoLite in the mail. If you would like to be one of those people who receives a $25 gift certificate to RepcoLite just for asking a question, hang around to the end of the show, and I'll tell you what you need to do. One of my absolute favorite parts of doing this show is getting to talk to experts from all over the place, you know, experts in all different fields. And it's really fun to talk to them about home improvement projects or questions or issues that are not currently taking place in my home. Those conversations are way less fun. But these in-studio conversations, these are all pretty great. You're listening to the Repco Light Home Improvement Show, sponsored by Benjamin Moore. And right now, I'm in the studio with expert plumber Mark DeVisser from Great Lakes Plumbing, more commonly known as The Plumber is Here. Mark, thanks for joining me. Glad to be here. Now, we've had you on multiple times, but why don't you talk a little bit about what you guys do, where you are, all that stuff. Introduce yourself to the listeners. Well, we're located in Holland, Michigan. We serve... Our basic area is somewhere between South Haven and maybe the south side of Muskegon over to Wyoming. We go to Grand Rapids sometimes, but that's our basic service area, and we're full service. We do just about everything and anything that is plumbing-related, mostly service, but we dabble in new houses and remodels and things like that also. Well, you just started a water treatment kind of branch to what you do, right? Yes, we did start a water treatment division and uh, just found a need for that in the market where people are concerned about what they're drinking and what their what their water, what's in their water. So we have that started up and um, it's been exciting to start that little venture. Yeah, really cool. I'll put links in the show notes if anybody wants to reach out, uh, ask Mark some questions. And funny enough, Mark, questions is what this is all about. I put out on the radio last week that I was going to have you here. I think you got a call from, what, your brother-in-law or something? Yeah, my brother had heard it and (laughs) said he'd be listening this week. Yeah, so there we go. we got people who emailed me questions. I've got questions from Facebook. Let's just jump right in. And let's start with a question from Lori in West Michigan. And what Lori wants to know is, what's the cause and fix for a dripping faucet? We're starting you off easy, Mark, but a lot of people are dealing with this, and you can help them do that troubleshooting if they're unaware where to start. So sure. what's the cause and fix for a dripping faucet? I want this one question I wanted to say first. This is a little bit like saying, what's it take to change my headlight? And we all know that uh, there are some cars out now that you, I know my father-in-law sold a car because he had to change a headlight. It was easier to sell the car. For it him? It was going to be so expensive. No, for some, it oh, was really? such a process what they had to remove. And I... I, I I met a guy who has an Audi who smashed out his light the other day. The light cost is five thousand dollars for the headlight. Just the seriously, cost of the light. you're not just his, making that up. His minor damage to the front of his Audi was twenty two thousand dollars to repair. Wow. So understand that when I answer this question, 
There's not a lot of washers anymore out there. There are some that use washers, and it can be torn apart, put the new washer in, and fix it. Most faucets have gone to ceramic disc, which is two plates of um, ceramic cartridge that slide together. And when they slide, they there's two holes in them. And when it slides, it opens that hole bigger and bigger. And then when it slides back, it shuts it. Mm-hmm. You can't fix that disc. You're going to buy a new cartridge with an entire disc. Um, the good thing is if you bought a good brand faucet, the chances are you can call in and get that delivered. If you don't want to fix it yourself, we do this all the time for people. They call in. Delta, for instance, is ceramic disc cartridge on a lot of their stuff. Very common. We'll say, listen, you have two options. You can pay us to bring it and we'll put it in. Or you could call Delta, have them send you one, get it on site, and then we'll install it for you. Is it a complicated install? Generally, no. Okay. Generally, it's very easy. Uh, you know. So what's the process for Lori? Does she need to pop something apart and take a look first? I mean, in all honesty, she could probably... Find a breakdown online. If she knows the brand, she yeah. can do YouTube and find out if she wants to. I mean, YouTube is a good way if somebody really wants to do it themselves. Not to say that we don't get a ton of shower faucets that the customer has YouTubed and literally ripped the faucet out of the wall. Oh, really? <laughs> and it's spraying everywhere. Yeah. And it's an emergency. It happens on a regular basis. If I never... they don't realize what's turning, yeah. they might be thinking they're turning the nut, but they're turning the whole faucet. No, I nervously giggle, Mark, because it's an uncomfortable conversation because I've wrecked a lot of things thinking. <laughs> I knew exactly what I was doing. Exactly. I YouTubed it. It made sense. Plumbing, that's just one of those things. It's not a spiritual gift of mine. Yep. I can lump my way through a lot of stuff. I get a lot of people that say, I'll do this, I'll do that, I'll do this, I'll do that, but I won't touch plumbing. Yeah, yeah. All right. So that's a good idea. Start with um, just looking at the brand, what you've got, finding that model online, looking at some schematics. Sure. And trying to get an idea if that's something you want to tackle, Lori, or if you want to get an expert in there to, to handle that. Exactly. All right, let's move on. I'm in the studio with Mark DeVisser from Great Lakes Plumbing, theplumberishere.com, and working through your questions. I've got another question. This one comes from Cheryl on Facebook. What can be done to get hot water more quickly to the kitchen and bathroom sinks? It takes forever to get there. A uh, very common question. There are a couple different ways Um, probably I would state the first way would be to create a return line, which then allows the hot water to slowly circulate from the sink and back to the heater. So it could be almost like an instant hot. You've already got this water looping and you turn on the water and it's hot. Mm-hmm. Um, if the base, if you can get a line from point A to point B, you can add a new line. That's one way. Uh, the other way is there are some systems that you put the pump under the sink, and when it gets the hot water to the sink, it pushes the water back into the cold line, and then that goes back to the heater, creating that loop. If you can't add a loop, you have to use what's existing. Uh, Now, one thing about that is now you get up at 11 or 11 o'clock. You're going to go to bed. You want to get a drink of cold water. That's what I was going to add. There's no cold water there until you get all the hot water out of the cold line. So now you've got the opposite problem. Now you got the opposite problem. Now you got hot water on the cold side. Yeah. Next time we have have you here, Cheryl's going to Cheryl's going to email and ask, "How do I get the cold water to the sink quicker?" (laughs) Exactly. So that's with the pump system, or is that with the loop as well? uh, No, the loop system would be two dedicated hot lines. So the hot line would be hot, but there would be a separate line going back to the heater, and the cold line would always be cold. So that's the ideal. That's, I mean, I don't know if, I guess guess that's the ideal, sure. 
Well, if I want cold water sure. in the middle of the night, last yeah. thing I need to do is be standing there waiting for the water to get, to get cold. cold. Right. I'll be exactly. wide awake for a long time. There is another that. option, and we did this this week for a customer. We actually added a small tank underneath their sink. That's what I wondered about. On the hot side. So the hot water feeds into the hot little hot water heater, 2.5 gallons. A little fella. Uh, yep. And it just plugs into a 110 outlet. So if you have a outlet under there, you can plug that in. And it goes, so the hot water gets taken from the supply line into the heater. From out of the heater, it goes back up to the sink. And now you're going to have just about instant hot water. You got 2.5 gallons in that tank. And by that time... Yeah, we're doing a you know, sink. We should be okay. You would catch a little bit of a cool down in there somewhere, but by by probably one gale and they got hot water going back into that tank. So it might So now would that hot water be only fed by that hot water heater? Like if I well, did it run would out be, if you you know, it would by the time it's being fed by hot water, it's just that first minute of cold. Okay. So you got you know, let's say you pour out, you fill a one gallon jug with hot water. Now you have a gallon of hot water left and a gallon of cold water. Yeah. But by that time, the the hot has now gotten hot to the heater. Okay. So it's mixing in the heater. It's a little bit. So you might, you could see it taper down a little bit temperature wise. Well, sometimes but, when we do dishes, I just run the water. And I would probably run out of hot water that way because I'm not filling up a basin to hold it and work with. I'm just running it. So if I run it down and it doesn't have time to reheat, I, it's not going to draw from my other yeah, backup yes, hot water it's, heater. It's, it's coming from your your regular hot water heater also. Oh, so, so then I've got that going. Be I should be good to go. Much, you should have instant hot water. And for the, let's say it took two and a half gallons of water. Let's say you had a, re, a water line coming from 100 feet away. Yep. And so that you put a two and a half gallon in, you're going to get two and a half gallons, and then it's going to start to cool down a little bit. And then it's going to, then it's getting, it's trying to heat, but it's not a fast heater. But the other hot water by that time is coming in. So you would, if you use two and a half gallons, you'd probably get a short burst of cooler water. Okay. And then fairly quickly, it would warm back up again. All right. So, so if you're filling the whole sink, it's probably no big deal if there's a little yeah, bit of cool down in right, there. Right, that would be fine. The best, the biggest thing is, you know, people want to wash their hands with warm water, or they, I don't know what else they're using water with. I like to drink but, warm water. Yeah, lukewarm water <laughs> on a hot like summer day. Water. Right. <laughs> All right. No, that makes sense. So those are a couple. Options. Economically. Which which is more reasonable, or is it vary by job? Like the yeah, it, little hot water varies. heater versus the loop. Yeah, varies. You're gonna spend a number of hundreds of dollars to do. I, when when people call me, I I often take calls from people who just have these questions, and I usually just say to them, you know, what's it worth to? You? If you said, well, it's worth one hundred and fifty dollars, I'd probably say it's probably not gonna happen, uh, you know. But if they said, well, I could spend a few hundred dollars on this, I go, okay, now maybe there's something we can do. Okay, that makes to sense. Make something work. What's the value for you as a customer? Yeah, that gives me something to work with. So you know, at least I can get an idea if that's something. That I want to try to address or fix or not. You know, if our listeners are out there sitting there thinking, boy, that is something I'd love to dig into and figure out. Maybe they've just got more questions for you and they want to reach out. How's the best way for them to get in touch? They can call us on the phone. They We have a texting number. Uh, we have email, multiple ways to get a hold of us. You can pretty much find us at theplumbershere.com or Great Lakes Plumbing Services, LLC. You'll find us very easily. All right. I'll put a phone number in the show notes. Mark DeVisser from The Plumber is here. Thanks for being here. Glad to be here. Thanks. Now, all right, let's take a break, and then when we come back, we're going to be talking about regret, paint project regret, and maybe just regret in general. Maybe you don't have enough regret in your life. Maybe you regret the fact that you don't have more regret. Well, we can help you with that. And if you have too much regret, we can help you with that too. All of that is coming up in just a minute, so stick around. We're back. You're listening to the Repco Light Home Improvement Show, sponsored by Benjamin Moore. And I have a big surprise for everybody out there. 
Haley's here. <laughs> Haley, welcome back. What a nice surprise Saturday morning. Or, for, for everybody out there? I said Saturday morning. That's okay. You're new at this. It's been a while. It's Sunday <laughs> as well. I have to constantly remind our guests. Weekend. What yeah, a nice just, surprise for the weekend. Just speak about it as if it's the weekend. Yeah, the show's kind of in a state of flux. We're not sure exactly how things are going to shake out. Yeah. Don't worry. We're not going anywhere. Right? I hope not. No, we're not going anywhere, but we're still trying to iron things out. And we'll have more information about that and how things will shake out in a little bit. But Haley... You're back. You've been off for a little bit, doing a lot of Haley things, chasing down a lot of dreams and visions. Oh, yeah. But you're back to help me out because we've got something that I want to talk about, and I didn't want to talk about it alone. I wanted to no. bounce ideas off somebody. Sometimes I would prefer to this just talk. This room is, you know, it's only so padded. It's padded on the ceiling. I think you'd need, like... I would need a full room. padded room <laughs> yes. if I was going to. Wow. I have not missed that. Anyway, let's get to this. What I want to talk about. I want to talk about regrets <laughs> because I live <laughs> in a world of regrets and I know that's not healthy. No. But yeah, my whole day is, what am I going to regret today? I don't know. I'm sure I've got a long list. I've got things that I haven't fully regretted yet, but I've got them written down. So you so can, I can later. Remind yeah. myself Good. and fully delve into the to, into the regret. Anyway, what I want to talk about, you and I were having this yeah. kind of, we had no intention of making this a topic. We were just, no, it just kind of happened about paint project regrets. That's what mm-hmm. we were talking about, paint project regrets that we personally had. And honestly, as we're talking, I thought, man, this is a perfect topic. Let's hit record and capture it. And that's what we're going to get to right here. We're going to list off some of the things that we've personally gone through. Now, not all of these are things that I've regretted about a paint project I've tackled, but they can apply to a paint project. Sure. And conversely, they can apply to any project. So I think there's something here for everybody, but some of these are going to be very specific paint ones. So let's talk about them with the eye towards avoiding them. because yes, That's the goal here. Let's avoid the regrets. <laughs> right. I've experienced some of these regrets. I don't want you to. The first one that I came up with, and you instantly agreed with this, mm-hmm. my first big regret is... I didn't paint the ceiling when I painted my room. I can't tell you how many times I've done this. It's like, I, I don't know why I can't learn from this regret, or no. this mistake, but it's a big one. Yeah. So you get the whole room done, and now you look at the ceiling, and the ceiling normally, I mean, it's something we don't even think about. Right. We it's, just don't look at it. It doesn't really like register in our brains, I think, most of the time. No, we just and assume. And that's the problem. There it is. It's, yeah. it's all fine. I don't need to touch it. Right. And then we do the walls, and we look at the space, and we realize, wow, the ceiling looks really kind of gnarly. That yeah. doesn't look nearly <laughs> as nice as I thought. Wow, it kind of looks yellowed. Mm-hmm. What's going on? And you wish you had painted it. We talk to people all the time, and now they've got a, you know, they can still do it. Yeah, it's but not now as it's nice or convenient. Yeah, it's a little tricky because you really want to start there because that's an application orientation where you're going to have a lot of splatter potentially, and now you've got these freshly painted walls where you don't want any of that. Splatter Splatter to get onto. It'd be different if you painted the ceiling first and we don't really have to worry about it getting on the wall so much. It's not such a stress. No. And now it's become a real challenge. Well, that's go back and do it. And like you said in the beginning, you wonder why don't we remember this? I know we have talked about this on the show probably multiple times. Right. I'm sure we've I've talked, talked about, about this. And yet I've got this living room. I've talked about it ad nauseum. Yes. On and on and on. Getting my colors figured out. Project that will the not walls. end. <laughs> yeah, all of that. Well, in that same room, I've got, there was a crack in the ceiling. Mm-hmm. And when I, I, I'd always known it was there, but I never really paid attention to it. Just a little hairline crack. Well, I think we probably had the like foundation. Air's basement on or something. And then you started looking at it like, oh my God. Do I have right. a foundation problem? <laughs> That's exactly what it what what happened. I started thinking about is this crack bigger than it used right. to be? So I got some spackle and I was just gonna fill it. Not not because I thought it was gonna go away at that point, mm-hmm. but because I thought now I'll fill it and I'll see if it's right. expanding. Something is, still is the house sinking into an abyss <laughs> right. or something? I'll figure this out. Well, I did that and wiped it clean, thinking everything was gonna be fine. Well, it turned out I ended up with a kind of shiny line down line the ceiling, all down the center of the yeah. room. So when the sun comes into the room, boom, there's this big shiny spot on the ceiling. So that's on the ceiling in that room. And yet 
until the day, just just, just this morning when we're talking right. about paint project regrets, I had not even thought about painting the ceiling in that room. <laughs> what an absolute idiot. There's still time. At least there you won't is. have to regret this one. My procrastination yeah. on the rest of the project has saved me. Yeah. So I'm going to write this down in my book, get that ceiling painted, and then get to the walls. And then when I'm done with everything, I'm going to really feel like I nailed it. If I did just the walls, and so many of us do that, mm-hmm. you get done and you look at it and you think, oh, what could have been? Right. Regret. Right. Paint project regret. A second one that I regret, and I don't think you know about this one, Haley. This is a surprise no to you. Fun. Here's my second regret. I didn't ask about what tools I should have for the work. And in order to explain this, sure. I've got to step out of the paint world because normally that's at least one thing I get that one pretty right. <laughs> I know about those tools. But I can talk about it more easily from a plumbing perspective, a situation that I had yeah. that almost destroyed my entire family. I had a leak under the, with the faucet. <laughs> so I, and it was, almost destroyed my entire family. <laughs> it did because I decided years and years ago I'm going to fix that faucet. And so I got a new faucet, and I don't remember all of the details, and the therapist says, don't dig into it further (laughs) and don't explore it. I do remember that I got the whole thing replaced and switched out. It took forever. It was painful, horrible, bloody knuckles. Nothing worked easily to get at all the little things I needed to get at, to get the faucet out and get it tightened back in place. It's hard to get wrenches in all of these areas with the sink base in there. Anyway, I get all done and it leaks. So I got to take it apart again and and monkey with it over and over. I went to the store multiple times. I was so crabby. The kids are standing there. They wondered when we're going out playing. I told them at the point we're at now, we're never going to play ever again in this house. All we're going to do is fix plumbing because that's what your daddy does now. He fixes plumbing. And that's how bad it was. It was terrible. I was yelling at everybody in the house. The sixth Sixth, I don't even know how to say that. I'm so excited. Sixth, yeah. A sixth trip to the store, I actually asked somebody, is there anything else I need? And they said, do you have a basin wrench? <laughs> and I realized, oh, this cheap little thing will make this monumental process much easier. And then he brought up one other thing that made my leak stop. In 15 minutes, I had the whole thing put back together and it was perfect. If I had just asked ahead of time, yeah. he'd have steered me towards those tools and I would have saved hours and hours and hours. Oh, I would love to say that that's stress. an exaggerated version yeah. of the truth. That is 100% probably an undersell of the misery of that day. You don't know what you don't know right. when you're in a project that's new. Yeah. So same thing with a paint project. You're, you're tackling a ceiling. Do you know all the different things that are out there that will help you accomplish that quicker and easier? Yeah, you can get an extension pole from, you know, take the pole handle off, off of the broom, broom or something. something yeah. But there are better ones that yes. will do different things. And you just don't know. And the beauty of it is if you go to a store, you know, go to a Repcolite, Tell us what you're working on. Right. You're painting trim. You're doing this. You're staining this. You're painting the ceiling. What do I need? You don't have to buy anything. We're not going to force you into buying anything. Right. Exactly. But at least when you go home and you're struggling, you'll know there was something that would have made it easier. Yes. Or maybe you buy it right off the bat. The big thing is ask the question. We'll yeah. The in. information doesn't hurt to have. No. The next one is one that you brought up. Try to get by with an old gallon of paint. Yep, did this. Really regretted it. (laughs) What was this? Um, I was touching up cabinets that I had painted, and I think I just, the last time I had painted them, I didn't put the lid back on the can tightly enough. And when I opened up the can, it smelled like a little funky but I was like, I'm just touching them up. It's not such mm-hmm. a big deal. Like, maybe it's a little bit bad. I don't know. We're just going to use it because it's right here. I'm not going to run out to the store and get a new gallon for this. And I really regret it because now what happens with, when you paint with old paint that has spoiled and gone bad, it doesn't just affect the layer that you're painting on in that moment. It It ruins the layers of paint under (laughs) that paint. So now, like the places where I've touched up, 
I literally have paint coming off all the way down to the wood of these cabinets. And these are old cabinets. They've been painted so many times. And I have created that massive of a paint failure by top coating something with an old gallon of paint that had spoiled just because I didn't feel like going out and getting a new gallon of paint that was good. Oh, see, that's a mess. And I was just talking to somebody. I was trying to remember as you were talking. In fact, I kind of zoned out on what you were saying. <laughs> So I was so busy trying to remember my story, but it was a customer who was asking me about how long the paint's going to stink. And I said, oh, like, you know, the normal like, paint smell? Right. He said, no, I used old paint that I think might have been bad. How long before that smell goes away? I said, well, how bad is the smell? He says, well, you know, dirty diapers and stuff. I said, yeah, okay, I got gotcha. you. It's a bad stink. And there, it's hard to say right. if that's even going right. to completely go away. And it was the same thing. I just he didn't want to run out. He said that. I just can't believe I tried to make that work. Yeah. I knew better. Right, right. I didn't want to run out. I had a, you know the project in mind. I'm going to do it today. That's the paint. I don't want to leave. Don't do that. It's not no, worth it's it. It's really yes, not worth it. I know things are expensive. I mean, we're all tempted to do that. But mm-hmm. what you end out, you know, end up playing out down the road. It's just not worth it. Not not worth the money no. to just get a new gallon. That's and you're going making to do more the job. work for yourself. Ultimately, you know, I didn't want to spend the time, and now I'm going to spend more time because I tried to save. Right, more time, and you're yeah. still, you know, you're going to have to get new paint right. to get all of this fixed. Exactly. Up anyway, that person is most likely going to need to get new paint, so you're still dropping the money. Mm-hmm. Now you get to do the job twice. It's just one of those things. It's a regret, and a lot of people don't realize the ramifications of it. Right. Well, Haley, we're hitting the end of the time that we've got for this segment. I'm wondering, can you hang with me over the break, and we'll pick this up on the other side? Definitely, Dan. All right. I knew the answer was yes, but I'm always polite, (laughs) always a gentleman, and so I asked. All right. We'll be back in just a minute. Stick around. And we're back. You're listening to the Repco Light Home Improvement Show, sponsored by Benjamin Moore. And we're working our way through a list, Haley and I, working our way through a list of paint project regrets. We got through three of them in the first segment. Uh, The first three, just quickly to recap, I didn't paint the ceiling when I painted my room. It's a big regret. We run into that all the time. We've done it multiple times. Yeah. Uh, Second regret, I didn't ask about what tools I should have for the work. I've labored my way through projects without having the right tools, without being aware that the right tools existed. And once I found them and asked asked somebody for help and got the right tools, the projects just flew by. Whereas before, I had been struggling and struggling. Same is true with paint projects. There's a lot of specialty tools. If you're not familiar and haven't done a lot of painting, make sure you're asking, what tools should I be using? You don't have to buy them, but at least you'll know about them. A third regret that we covered was trying to get by with a gallon of old paint. And by old, I mean maybe spoiled or paint that's a little clumpy, lumpy, whatever you want to call it. (laughs) Paint that's not in its prime anymore. Trying to get by with that usually ends up producing some regret down the road. Now, the fourth one, a new one that we want to get to right now, is very similar to that one, and the, the previous one. And it's trying to get by with less paint than you really should have. And this is something I do all the time. And this always happens as I'm hitting basically the halfway point on a project. <laughs> the beginning part, it's like paint everywhere, paint all around, you know, wherever yeah. I want to put paint, I'm going to just lather it on. And then halfway through, I start doing the economics of it. Mm -hmm. And I start assessing, you know, I'm budgeting at my paint at that point. How much is left? How much do I have to do? I'm going to have to really, right. So half of the room is coated and looks beautiful. The other half, it's just whatever I was managing to eke out. And I always have to end up going back and redoing everything in the long run. Things don't cover well. It doesn't look good. You don't end up with good results. And when you're pressing that hard with a roller, too, you end up with the lines that, you know, from the paint building up because you're trying to squeeze every last bit of paint out of it. Like, you really shouldn't be applying pressure to the wall when you're rolling paint on. You should be letting the paint do the work for you. And so often people don't realize that and they're they are doing that exact thing where you're just trying to get every last drop out of this before you go back for more. And I get it. I live in that zone, but I I never win. I always have to, you know, and what happens is I don't normally catch it until a couple days later is when I realize the Mm -hmm. visual, you know, the light. I always start my projects at a ridiculous time of the day (laughs) and the lighting is never great. You know, it always happens that three days later I'm in the room looking at it and I realize I don't think that covered 
Now everything's put away and put back together. Yeah. Take it all apart. Redo it. What a pain. Don't even go down that road. Just make sure you got enough product. If you see you're running short, either send somebody out to get more mm-hmm. or finish in a corner. Yeah. And hit come pause. Back the next day, it, you know, with another quart or something yeah, like that. So much better than just like trying to skim by. Let's see here. I've got we've got time for just a couple more. And that, honestly, look at that. That's all I've got is a couple more. And then my paint regrets. My paint project regrets are no more. We've yep, gone through them all. aired them out. My fifth one, I try to get by with a cheaper paint. Now, this is another one that I don't really do with paint because we get a heck of a deal. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so there's really no point in it. But I do this with other things. So yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely. speaking to other people. But, you know, I've done this with... A, a, a refrigerator. That's the one that first comes to mm. mind. My refrigerator goes, well, I don't want to go, you know, spend this. Look at this one's 400 bucks. <laughs> it's the right size. What could possibly go wrong with that? The guy who installed it is even saying, wow, you got a cheap one here, didn't you? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> he said, yeah, I'd probably get a few years out of this for sure. I said, what? Uh. He said, yeah, you're not going to get very long out of this. And that's what I do. And he was right. It didn't last nearly the time I thought it would. I end up spending more in the long run just to get something decent. Same thing is true with paint. Mm -hmm. You know, Scuff X from Benjamin Moore. You pay for it. It's 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 pricier than just bargain paint. Right. But it's gonna outperform anything out there in the situations that it's meant for. Exactly. It's going to look brand new for years and years and years and years. I mean, nothing can touch it. So it is worth it because you're not going to repaint. It's easy to think that paint's paint. You know, it doesn't matter. But you're going to find that higher quality paints use better ingredients. They're going to apply easier, which is going to make all of that just much nicer to work with. They're going to last longer, wash up better, hold up better, all of those things. And with that said, you know, when you come into RepcoLite, we're not here to sell you absolute top of the line paint for every single project if that's not what your project right. requires. There's going to be certain projects where, yeah, that middle of the road paint's mm-hmm. great for the durability or what you're going to ask you out of that a, space. It's a guest room that doesn't really get used. We're not going to sell you a scuff X for it. Like, yeah. we're going to match the product to the needs of the space. Yeah. And that's what we're talking about. We'll help you walk through all of that and make a good decision right. and get the right paint. The, the, the good stuff when you need it. Right. Last one. We don't ha- hardly have any time, but I'm sure everybody's going to know what I'm talking about. The sixth paint regret, I didn't take the time to clean up when I was done. Happens to me all the time. I get to the end of a project, and now I'm shot. I'm done. I'm over. I'm so over it. I'm going to just put everything away because I want to go outside and play and do fun stuff. And I'll wash it up later, or I don't even care. I'll deal with it later. And I forget about it. Yep. And then six months later, three mm-hmm. months later, I go to get all my tools out <laughs> and I realize everything I've got has to be replaced yep. or most of it does. Yep. And then I'm so mad at myself. Yep. I've been there. What a money waste. It is because you are just so over it by the time you get to that point where you just want to be done. And yeah. Yeah. Future Haley is not thanking me. <laughs> no. So take the time to clean stuff out. Get the better paint. Ask about the tools. Paint that ceiling when you're doing a room, and you'll live paint regret free. Okay. I can't promise other yeah. regrets because <laughs> I know I'm loaded up, but at least at least you won't have paint regrets. All right, that's all the time we've got. But before I wrap it all up, I saved a little smidgen of time so I could go over a couple of important announcements. First off, we just talked about using good paint when you tackle your project, so you don't have paint regret. Well, all of June, Repcolite's Endura exterior paint and Benjamin Moore's Element Guard exterior paint are both on sale. Now, these are both great exterior products. They're 25% off the retail price all month long. So if you've got some exterior work on your list of things to do this summer, you might want to bump it to a little sooner on the list and stop out at any Repcolite and ask about those products. Endura is a paint that we make in our Holland plant. It bonds really well. It's got great adherence to whatever surface you're working on. It gives you a tough and flexible finish, so it can handle pretty much anything Michigan weather throws at it. Element Guard, its main claim to fame is that it will resist resist rain and moisture as soon as 60 minutes after application. And really, that's unheard of. It's a great safety net.
sweat when you're painting in the early or late exterior season, and it's a great safeguard against a sudden rainstorm. Element Guard and Endura, both are on sale for the rest of June for 25% off the retail price. So, know about that, be aware of that. Second important announcement, I'm giving out some $25 gift certificates to Repco Light to the people who asked me plumbing questions that I brought to Mark in segment two. Next week, I'm going to be interviewing experts from Village Custom Interiors, and I want to do the same thing. So send me your questions. Now, Village Custom Interiors does cabinets, flooring of all kinds, countertops, tile, and more. What do you want to know? Send your questions to me at radio at RepcoLite.com, and if I use your question on the air, I'll send you a $25 gift certificate to RepcoLite as a thank you. Because I'm big-hearted like that. It's how I roll. All right, enough. Whatever you do today, make sure paint's a part of it. Have a great weekend, everybody, and I'll see you next week. I'm Dan Hansen. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.